Yeah, we back in this piece. Yeah. Oh, yeah, give it up. Go ahead. Go ahead now. Yeah. Because now we're going to shift a little bit. We was talking about America being the devil's advocate. And it's so ironic that America, a Christian nation, is helping a nation who don't believe Jesus is the Messiah kill a nation of people who do believe that Jesus is their Messiah. And that is the Israelis against the Palestinians. America has blood on their hands. Now, I want to talk about prayer. I want to talk about the Christian church, and I want to talk about this prayer. And I want to go over some scriptures. And I do have a video clip, because this is the thing. In Christianity, the Christians are supposed to be doing the miracles of Jesus, supposedly. They are supposed to be the miracle workers. According to the Bible, there should be no hospitals, and there should be a lot of people raising up from the dead, okay? Because they are all supposed to be healers and miracle workers, according to the Bible. So we're going to deal with this thing. First, I want to deal with Acts 11, 26. Now, this is the first time that the church was called Christians. Jesus never once called the church Christians. Never once. Christians were first called Christians by the heathens because these Christians was supposedly, according to the writer of the book of Acts, was doing the miracles of Christ. So now I'm going to go to Acts 11:26. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. So they were called first Christians by the people of Antioch. That was the first time they was called Christians because they was doing the works of Christ, supposedly. Now, I want to show you a quick clip on how Jesus and Paul taught differently. You have to do to have eternal life. Jesus is quite clear. You keep the commandments. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I said, all right, now, suppose that same guy came up to Paul 20 years later and said, Master, what do we have to do to have eternal life? Does Paul say, keep the commandments? No. <laughs> Paul said, you can't believe in the death and resurrection of Jesus. Hello, lucky people. My name is Emma. Welcome. All right, there you have it right there. That's just a quick clip. Paul and Jesus taught differently. If you look at the scriptures of Jesus, for the most part, he said you need to keep the commandments in order to have eternal life. But what does Paul say? He said you must believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ in order for you to have eternal life. So that's just showing you right there that there are some strange things going on in the New Testament. Now, I want to go along with my point and my point is how prayer is supposed to be the lifeline of the church and it's supposed to be the lifeline of the world Christians have the power supposedly according to Matthew 28 when Jesus said all power is given unto me in heaven and earth and when he authorized his disciples to go in his name, that that same power, that same miracle healing power that Jesus had, 
The church is supposed to have it, and it's supposed to be greater. It is supposed to be greater. So now we're going to look at all of these false healings. And this is going to be a clip that I'm going to show you. One by one, his former followers are beginning to tell tales of alleged deceit. The latest, Mary Elizabeth Turk of Dallas, who says Tilton promised to heal her cancer if she would give him $1,000. She almost died waiting. He said, I've got the faith. All you need to do is obey and send the money. And he said, because he was God's prophet. She was so swayed by Tilton's promises of a miracle, she stopped her medical treatment. Several months later, Mary died from colon cancer. The doctor that was her oncology specialist when she was in the hospital taking her radiation and her chemotherapy said that if she had received medical care in time, she could have been cured, which is a strong word in cancer. She felt that because of the constant bombardment of personal mailings that Robert Tilton was so personally involved with her and her case and was monitoring every bit of it and was so concerned about her that he was powerful enough of a personality that he convinced her that she was going to receive a haven. Every prayer request that comes in that gets into our mail, I personally pray over. On flyers mailed out to the viewers, Tilton urges them to place their hand on the paper and send it in. He then promises to place his hand on that same spot as he does a special prayer. While Tilton has said that all the miracles are medically documented, in a deposition once, Tilton was asked by a lawyer, is there anyone else that you have published their names that you claim has received healing that's been documented, medically speaking, as a result of your having prayed for them? Tilton's answer, no. I've had about three or four of those in the last month. Well, it's crystal clear that these con artists don't really care about you. All they really care about is your cash. Welcome to Real Talk with Jordan Riley, where the real talk does not come from me, it comes directly from God's Word. And before we get started, I'm going to ask that you subscribe to my channel and give this episode a thumbs up. Today I'm going to shine a spotlight on fake healers, <coughs> excuse me, I mean faith healers, who perform false miracles, emotionally manipulate crowds, tell made up stories, and take your money. <laughs> in the business and you don't get meetings or you don't get booked back unless you have a gimmick or as the evangelists say it's a ministry it's incredible they'll say oh brother so and so he's got the ministry of laying on the hands or he's got the ministry of prophecy but that's a gimmick and the guys that have the gimmicks get the big meetings and do good <laughs> let's start off with the most famous faith healer Benny Hinn who also tells a ton of false prophecies and preaches the prosperity gospel I have never lied to you never I never will. I'd rather die than lie to God's people. Yeah, Houston, we got a problem here. It might be a little fakery going on. A perfect healing. So they must be healed. Exactly. So if she's not healed, if she's not healed, tell me. You have a problem. We have a problem. Do you know something about it that I don't know? Well, we know nobody called this woman's doctor before Benny ran and re-ran this miracle healing on TV. We know one of those children is not even hers. And we know the lady has what not been all? healed of AIDS because just this week, we had her tested to find out. So he couldn't heal a guy, a lady with AIDS. Maybe he can heal this person with polio. Hmm. God has just healed her. Healed her of what, Pastor? Polio. This woman who said she had polio and would never walk again, she and her friends say she just climbed out of her wheelchair and walked? Someday somebody's going to do that. And what are you going to say then? I don't know. I can't tell you now. <laughs> it hasn't happened yet. Oh, yes, it has. Remember that woman supposedly cured of polio? Pastor Benny knows it made for a great episode of his TV show. He knows it probably helped squeeze even bigger donations from his flock. But there's something he doesn't know. That woman works for us. The woman doesn't have polio, never did. Then why did she say she had? We put her up there to see if he could tell her story was not true. To see if it would matter. To see if he would ever check. This is insane. I mean, really. Where anywhere in the Bible did Jesus or the apostles go around swinging their coat and knocking people over? Or taking their hand and smacking them on the forehead to knock them to the ground? Or yelling, fire! You know, when they healed somebody. No. This is a circus. This is a show. It's not biblical. It's blasphemy. And why do they do it? They do it so they can make money. 
that's really what happens because at the end of every night of these things you're going to see they pass around offering buckets so you can fill it you can empty your wallet and fill their pockets it's lunacy but you have to know in the bible when jesus healed it was immediate and full and complete you didn't have to wait for it you didn't have to step into it you didn't have to do anything to get it no jesus grew limbs he raised the dead he gave blind people their sight people who couldn't walk he allowed them to walk again okay nothing nothing absolutely like the buffoonery you're about to see are you ready for god to overhaul those knees we're seeing a postman named don henry from san francisco who has been healed now by 11 different faith healers of nine different diseases in seven different cities and under two genders because as bernice manikoff this man was healed of ovarian cancer twice by two different prominent healers and he now has the healthiest ovaries of any postman certainly in san francisco i can assure you my god jesus let oh hallelujah he's not gonna leave yeah, that man was uh, like we call paid actor. Yeah, that's not real. Now we're going to see Todd White's clip sped up quite a bit and looped back and forth. Now this is where we can see what's really going on here. The leg on our right is supposed to be the short leg, and this is the leg which should be miraculously growing, but it's not. Look at the leg on our left. That's where all the action is. That's what's actually being manipulated. You can see that Todd is actually pivoting or shifting the foot of the so-called long leg so that the heels match. Now, he's doing this very slowly over time, but it's painfully obvious when you speed up the clip. This is nothing but a parlor trick which got Todd White started in the first place. He started by pulling people's legs. And guess what? He's still pulling people's legs even more today. Put your hand on your head like that. Ball spots, I call you gone. proof that anybody grew any hair. I mean, if we all had that power, I could be like, zits, I call you gone. Muscles grow. <laughs> That's just nonsense. Not biblical. The problem is most faith healers, they get you hooked by telling fairy tales, big whoppers of stories that, you know, and it preys on the vulnerable and the gullible. We've seen six people raised from the dead. The dead man began to move. We've seen midgets grow. We've seen arms and legs that stop growing because the growth cells that stop. I don't make this stuff up. They also manipulate you by pretending to have some kind of divine revelation from God. Ooh, boy. God and them are BFFs, you know. But it's all lies. And here they are being exposed. We discovered that before every service, Rand and his associates circulate informally among the friends and family of the sick making notes, or even casually interviewing the people who will later be healed. We saw Grant gather information on more than 35 people he later seemed to identify by revelation from God. And last but not least, here comes Peter Popoff, who we, a lot of people thought the Holy Spirit was giving him divine revelation. But it's not, it's someone else. Hello, I can see the angels of God all around your house. See, faith healers always use gimmicks to make them seem godlike, to make them feel like they have a special power. They glow in the dark. They're superheroes. Fire on him from the top of his head. We saw Grant walk up to this man during the service and hold up his cane. He healed him and told him to run down the aisle. The crowd thunders applause. But let's look at that again. Grant isn't grabbing the cane of the man. He's grabbing the cane of the woman in the next seat. Outside, the man told us his problem was with his arm. He had never had any trouble walking. Their job is to make you think that they have some supernatural authority. COVID-19! COVID-19! Destroyed forever? 
You are you are destroyed. And you will never be back. Wow, Kenneth. Did you realize that COVID didn't go anywhere? <laughs> you didn't do jack squat to COVID. I'm sorry. It's still around. It's still a real thing. <laughs> yeah, that's him going through you right now. Yes, it is. <laughs> Glory to God. You're not bound to this chair. The day will come you'll walk out of it. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Now then, you guys, just help him up. Help him up. Our God's all over him. He's not hurt. He's not hurt. Praise the God. Praise the Lord. Not wanting to draw attention to this colossal failure, Kenneth Copeland simply moves on. Praise the Lord God. Praise the Lord. And towards the end of the service, you can see this same poor guy still wheelchair bound. What an epic failure. I mean, these people can't cure a hangnail. I don't know why anyone would believe the nonsense of these people. It's been proven over and over how false they are. See, they're not Christ-like. They're hurting people. They're robbing people. They're lying to people. And money is their God. Money is their idol. Money is their focus. See, the problem is that people are so desperate these days to be healed or to be free from different ailments and things they struggle with. And so when the healing doesn't take place, guess what these faith healers tell him well you know you just have to wait for it or you didn't have enough faith that is devastating those are lies that's not true please understand that people are being destroyed emotionally spiritually and physically people have lost their lives going to faith healers trusting in these con artists now i do want you to understand nowhere in the bible does jesus ever promise that healing will take place this side of heaven now, does God still heal today? Absolutely. But it's when he chooses. And it's according to his will. It's not because we decreed and declared it. It's not because we went to some faith healer and paid them a bunch of money and stayed at their crusade and got emotionally manipulated for hours. No. I just wanted to give you all a little clip. All right. I just wanted you all to see how these people are literally frauds. They're playing games. They have walkie-talkies in the services. The first clip we've seen of Robert, the so-called healer, the woman died of cancer. We've seen Benny Hinn. He was set up. The woman didn't even have polio. She was sent in there by them, okay, and they busted him. They have no prophecy. They have no miracle healing power. Now, now we're going to look at some scriptures. I'm going to show you. I'm going to tell you something, man. Christianity is a joke. It is a big joke. Because they are supposed to have healing power, according to the Bible. Now, I want to go to John 14, 13. We're going to read this. It reads, And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So Jesus supposedly is saying, Whatever you ask in my name, he'll do it. Now going to John 14, 14. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now, come on, y'all. How many times have you prayed? And how many times have people prayed? And nothing changed. Nothing changed. So if you just look at what the scripture is saying, and the scripture is not saying, well, you know, if you're sick and this and that and well you know when I leave um, you won't be able to do this miracle no more no the Bible is literally saying whatever you ask in my name I will do it now we know for a fact there is hospitals all over the place and if there was one church that actually had the power of God 
then there would be no hospitals. There would be none. Okay, but that just to tell you that the Christians, all they have is wishing, hoping. They don't have any miracle power at all. And that's why, like I'm telling you, you'll see that these scriptures right here, you got to understand, they ain't talking about the truth. This stuff is not true. Okay, now let's go to a real scripture where Jesus gave us a scripture on prayer because he didn't tell us to pray in his name. This is going to be Matthew chapter 6 verse 9. And I want to start at 8. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things you have need of him before ye ask him. After this manner therefore pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So, according to this prayer, we're not talking to Jesus. Jesus said we're supposed to be asking the Father. And there's no in Jesus' name on the end of this prayer. And notice what it said at the beginning. It says, after this manner, you should pray. Not in his name, but all of a sudden in your book of John, the same book that says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the seven great I am statements coming from Jesus. In this same book, it tells the Christians that whatever they ask for will be given to them. And as you can see, none of that stuff is happening. There is no miracles happening. According to this prayer, all we see is time and chance. What is that? That is sometimes people get healed. Sometimes people don't get healed. Some people don't die. Some people do die. But they all die when it's their time. So we see that nothing is going on as far as this prayer. It's just time and chance. And time and chance happens to us all. Now, these preachers, they have literally turned the church into a business. I read a, uh, a title to a video today of how this woman, uh, she left a Muslim lifestyle to join a Christian church. And it was sad. Because I asked her if she can show me a scripture coming from God Almighty where he said Jesus is going to die for your sins. And she said, you know what? I don't have no details. All I know is that Jesus saved my life. And I was just like, wow. Wow. Okay. She left something that was truth to join something that was false. Now, I got more scriptures on prayer. I got more scriptures on prayer. This is going to be John 15 and 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. Now, somebody is straight up lying if they are saying whatever they ask in Jesus' name, God gives them. There's not one single person walking the planet that can literally say that whatever I ask in Jesus' name, I have it. That's a complete lie. These prayers don't work because these prayers is not God's prayer. This is not, this is not God's way. All in the Old Testament, this wasn't God's way. When did God ever show up on the scene and started telling people to ask some things and he'll give it to them? That's never been God's way. Now, he showed up to Abraham and he told Abraham he would have a son. That's different. That is different. 
I'm talking about instant gratification. I'm talking about immediate prayers being answered. Okay, now you can see that these prayers are nothing more than birthday wishes. <laughs> Blowing out the candle and you wishing for something. Many people have been robbed. And there's a lot of people who do not come to church today because they have prayed a prayer in Jesus name and they didn't get it. You know, we got to deal with this. And these Christians, let me tell you something, they so fake. They'll say all these things about Islam and all this stuff about Muhammad, peace be upon him, but they can't even do one thing that Jesus said they could do. Jesus said whatever they ask in his name, he will give it them. They still sick. They can't help nobody that's sick. They talk about Jesus doing all these miracles and they ain't doing not one miracle. Not one. Okay, it is a big fraud. Now I have more scriptures. This is going to be John chapter 16, verse 23. In that day, and that is going into the new covenant, according to the Christians. According to the Christians, this is the day. In that day, you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily means truthfully, honestly. I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. So this is the thing. You have scriptures that say Jesus will give you something. And then you have scriptures that say the Father is going to give you something. And ain't nobody receiving nothing. Come on, let's just be honest. How many prayers have you prayed in Jesus' name and you ain't get a damn thing? Stop being afraid. Just be real with yourself. It is a joke. It is literally a joke. We just looked at a woman who had cancer. She went to the church, paid money, and went straight to the grave. When it wasn't just one person praying in Jesus' name, it was her, it was the pastor or the robber who prayed for her, and it was the rest of the church. These churches have no power. These churches are being ransacked. Now, I just looked at a story today of a pastor who had a Corvette. He had a Corvette, and... Some thieves came into his parking lot while he was in church and they was breaking into his Corvette. Okay. And as he came out to stop them, he was shot in his mouth. He was shot in his mouth. And they still took his Corvette. Okay. I'm pretty sure he prayed in Jesus name. You think that bullet came out? That's telling you something is wrong. Let me tell you something. The author of the book of John is anonymous. The author of all the gospels is anonymous. Okay? They are fictitious synonyms. Some people pronounce it pseudonyms. What is that? A fictitious name. Neither Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John was eyewitnesses. These letters came after Jesus departed. Matter of fact, these letters came after Paul. Now, what's wrong with that? How these letters came after Paul's letters? How come we received the letters of Paul first, but the letters of the Gospels came after that see these are these things okay the church is a huge manipulation center the church is a huge fraud there's not one single person in my comments talking all this smack can do one miracle in Jesus name they don't have enough faith to pray flying off the windowsill they can't do one single miracle but yet they're called Christians now, when the Christians were called Christians, it's because they were Christ-like. They was like, dang, these people is doing the same thing Christ was doing. So we're going to call them Christians. But what do the Christian have today? The Christian doesn't have any evidence 
that he's a Christian. He can't do one miracle. Now, I still have a few more scriptures. And this is going to be John 16, 24. Hitherto, and that means up till now. Up till now, have you asked nothing in my name? Ask, and you shall receive, that your joy may be full. So, according to this fairy tale book, man, okay, there are some scriptures in here. We know for a fact it's fairy tale. Now, we've concluded that the Bible is truth and falsehood. It does have truth, but it does have falsehood. It is a two-edged sword. And so he's saying, whatever you ask, it will be given so that your joy may be full. Now, just think about it. The Christians, they have Jesus. These miracles, if they could do them, could possibly bring people into the church. Okay? They're supposed to be able to heal the sick. And I'm talking about the unbelievers so that when the unbeliever gets healed, they want to come to church. That's the whole idea of miracles, signs, and wonders. It is to bring people in the church. But what do you have going on in this church? What do you have going on in the church? A bunch of lip service. No miracles, no power, but they all want your money. Same thing with the Israelite camps. They have no miracles. They have no prophecy. They just want your money. They don't have any evidence proving their prophets, miracle workers, healers, or anything such as the like. Now, I still have more scriptures. I have John 16, 26. At that day, you shall ask in my name, and I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you. Now, what is he saying? Let's take a deeper look at that. Yeah. Let's take a deeper look at that. Verse 27. For the Father himself love of you because you have loved me. And have believed that I came out from God. So he's basically saying, you ain't got to ask me. God loves you. Whatever you ask, God's going to give it to you. Because God loves you. Is anybody seeing any results of these type of prayers? I want you to answer into your mic. Is anybody getting anything from these prayers in Jesus' name? No, I actually had those uh, kind of experience of the clips that you just show us on the previous uh, Christian churches I went to. Um, I have been on the front of the church, on the congregation, and the pastor supposedly put his hand on my forehead and pushed me down, and I didn't feel nothing. All I saw it was uh, fakeness, and they had buckets everywhere, and people throwing up. I thought that was really disgusting. Because supposedly after they pray for you, the demons come out through your vomit. So I never, I got pushed several times. I never threw up because that, that wasn't true. I didn't felt it. So I saw the fakeness. That's why I left Christianity. Yeah. I'm glad you did. Anybody get a miracle yet in Jesus' name? No. No. And this is the thing. Now, most people will say, well, just because you didn't get a miracle, that don't mean the Bible ain't true. Well, this is the thing. Jesus said, whatever you ask in his name, he'll give it to you. Point blank. And nobody is receiving nothing. These people are only manipulating your emotions and messing with your feelings. And let me tell you something. The doctors are still getting paid. The doctors should be broke according to the Bible. Now think about it. If all these Christians really did pray these prayers, then that means 
there should be no sick people. Not only that, the Bible talks about raising the dead. It shouldn't be that many funerals. So when you really look at what the Bible says and you see that ain't nobody getting no results, then it must be a problem with the Bible. That's just how you look at it. If everybody's saying little Johnny, little Johnny, little Johnny, little Johnny, then maybe the problem is with little Johnny. Y'all act like the Bible is written in Aramaic. They act like the New Testament is written in Hebrew. The New Testament is written in Greek. Okay, the same language of the people who ransacked 70 AD and took the children of Israel out of there and destroyed the temple. The Bible in the New Testament is written in our enemy's language. So when we look at these scriptures, and I still got a few more because I know I'm at time. And this is going to be 1 John 5, 14 and 15. Look what it says. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desire of him. So basically, whatever we ask for, God will give it to us. That sounds like a fairy tale. It sounds like you're playing Monopoly. It sounds like a dream. You got a lot of money in this dream and then you wake up and then it's back to reality. So I showed y'all some scriptures and I gave y'all all these scriptures. Okay. Now, according to these scriptures, I don't see how Muslims is losing debates with Christians. All you got to do is take them to these scriptures. Hey, can you cast out a devil? Can you raise the dead? Can you heal the sick? How are you a Christian then? You have no evidence proving you a Christian. You can't do none of the things that the Christians did. How is this book true? How is it true? The hospital industry is growing by the day. If all these faith healers was really true healers, all they had to do is walk right inside the hospital and clear everybody out and it will be on the news and the doctors and everybody will be converted. They'd be like, you know what? These people really do have the truth and people would literally be in the Christian church for real dedicated. But there's a problem because this stuff is not true. It's all fictitious. It's all a joke. Now, I'm not saying God don't heal. I'm not saying that, but what I'm saying is according to what the Bible says and what people are doing, they are not getting no results. That means something fishy is going on. So I challenge you Christians, y'all claim to have Jesus as your God and all this stuff, but you can't even pray a fly off the windowsill. You can't even do one miracle. I mean, you can't even get rid of a cold. You can't even pray a cold away. These people are going to the hospital and the doctors is prescribing a medicine that we can't even pronounce, you know, to help take away the stuff because the Christians cannot do what the Bible is saying. All right. So now is that time. It's that time for us to get in the word. Is y'all ready? Yes. All right. <laughs> 